Hey, what's going on guys? Arix here. Welcome back to another video for Ghost of Tsushima. And in this one, I want to show you guys all of the armor sets, all of the vanity and cosmetic items you have in the game. That includes every single armor set fully upgraded. It also includes all of the masks, the helmets, the headbands, everything like that. Now, of course, before I go any further, I am going to give you guys a spoiler warning. If you do not want to see some of the armor sets you get in the game, some of the end game armor sets, if you don't want to see some of the things you can unlock, this would be the point to step away. If you are still here in the next like 10 seconds and you still complain, then uh, that's on you. Anyway, with that being said, there are some incredibly cool armor sets in this game, and as you're playing through, you will of course earn the majority of these through story progression. Some of them come from side missions, and then when you visit the armor smith, they can then upgrade them, and as you upgrade armor sets, most of them will change form. Most armor sets tend to have three different forms, the base form, the kind of initially upgraded form, and then the refined final upgraded form, and in doing so, it also improves their stats. Keep in mind in game, the armor sets that you wear on your body, they're the ones that will give you some kind of stats. Meanwhile, any sort of helmet or mask or headband you wear is purely cosmetic. So to begin with, the very first armor set, the one that you get at the very beginning of the game is of course the broken armor. There is absolutely nothing you can do with this one. You can't upgrade it, you can't color it, you can't change it. It is just purely story armor set. You get it at the very beginning and then very soon after you will be swapping it out. But it does still look kind of cool. Of course, uh, you know, it is battle worn and whatnot, but anyway, that is armor set number one. Now, moving on from there, I'm going to jump over to the Traveler's Attire just because this is the second armor set you get. Beyond this point, I'm just going to do them in the order of the list because it's just easier. But Traveler's Attire is incredibly useful because as you are exploring the world, with this equipped, it allows you to track artifacts using the Guiding Wind. When you're traveling, it also clears more of the Fog of War on the map. So this is the upgraded version, so it clears 30%. And also when you are looking for collectibles like Sashimono war banners, Mongol records, that kind of thing, your controller will vibrate within 60 meters of an artifact. Keep in mind this is the upgraded version, I believe the base version is within 30 meters and I believe it only clears 20% of the fog of war but obviously I can't go back so you're gonna have to deal with that. Anyway, this is really good if you just want to explore and as you can see in the background these are the three upgraded versions. Moving on from there, we then have the Samurai Clan armor. You get this one again simply by playing throughout the game. And this one is pretty cool. For this one, when you have this equipped, it reduces damage by a major amount, all damage. You also have a massive increase to health and taking damage grants 30% resolve, which is incredibly useful because again, remember resolve is used for your special abilities and also to heal, so that is also pretty cool. Keep in mind, I have assembled the armor set here. When you are buying it for the first time, it shows everything collectively, but once you've earned them and you've upgraded them, you can of course mix and match these pieces. So I have done my best to try and assemble them as they were as I started to upgrade them, if that makes sense. Like sometimes the mask might be different and the helmet might be different, but I'm trying to give you a picture as to what they look like Base version, mid-tier version, upgraded. For this one, obviously as you upgrade it, you get the shoulder plates, the kind of full armor, and you get the upgraded helmet. Next up, one for the archers out there, we have Tadayori's armor, and this is one that comes from a side quest, one of the mythic tales. This is one of those kind of legendary quests you want to be doing to either unlock special abilities or special armor sets. For this one, when you wear it, it increases the knocking and the reload speed by 30%, so basically you can uh, fire your arrows faster. It increases total concentration time by two seconds, which is the time that you can basically hold your breath and go in slow motion. And headshots will also restore 50% of the concentration meter. So effectively, if you want to be using the bow a lot, this is the set for you. And of course, as you upgrade it, it gets uh, more extravagant with the fancy big hat. Next up on the list, this one is actually pretty simple. In fact, this one doesn't actually change form. This is one of the only armor sets that when you upgrade it, it just remains the same. You get this one again simply by playing throughout the story. When you wear this one, it reduces enemy deflection speed by 20%. You get a 30% increase to melee damage, and after leaving Pampas Grass while crouched, enemies will be significantly slower to detect you. So this is basically, if you want to be more stealthy, this is the armor set for you. Moving on from there, we then have the Gosaku armor set, which is incredibly cool. This is, again, one of the ones that comes from the Mythic Tales. You can get this about halfway through the game. Once you get to the second portion of the map, you will then be in a position where you can go back and you can retrieve keys, which will then be used to unlock a door that allows you to get into an area where you can get this armor set. So again, provided you are doing the side quest, provided you are doing the Mythic Tales, you can get this armor set. When you wear this one, you get a massive increase to health, you get a major increase to stagger damage, and 
Killing a staggered enemy restores 20% of your health. This one, of course, once you fully upgrade it, you have this incredibly over-the-top helmet, of course, with all the uh, little moustache on your mask as well. Looks very cool. And this is... Uh, Gosaku is, of course, the defender of Tsushima's farmers. Then moving on from there, we have the Sakai clan armor, which is, of course, is the iconic armor. This is, uh, you know, again, you'll get this by playing throughout the game. There comes a point where you have to go and retrieve this. And when you wear this one, you again get a major increase to melee damage, a massive increase to health. And this one is incredibly cool because when you fully upgrade it, you get an increase to the standoff streak by two. And Willy's standoff has a 25% chance to terrify nearby enemies. Keep in mind, if you want to get the trophy for the maximum standoff streak, you need to have unlocked the uh, standoff streak ability in the skill tree, which gives you three. And if you wear the fully upgraded Sakai clan armor for the additional two, you can basically get five enemies in one standoff streak, which is the max. So uh, definitely useful. Also, it just looks incredibly cool. I normally wear this one in red, absolutely love it. So yeah, I like this a lot. Moving on from there, we then have the Kensei armor. Again, this one comes from a mythic tale, one of those kind of legendary side quests. If you wear this one, you get a 30% increase to resolve gains. Ghost weapons deal 30% more damage and striking an enemy with a ghost weapon. Keep in mind, ghost weapons are things like kunai, smoke bombs, wind chimes, those kind of things. If you strike an enemy with a ghost weapon, it causes that enemy to deal 50% less damage and receive 50% more damage, which is incredibly cool. And as you can see, as you go and begin to upgrade this one, you get more stuff like around your shoulders and whatnot. Looks actually pretty cool. You know, I didn't really wear this one too much in the game, but this is uh, the fully upgraded version. After that, we then have the ghost armor, again, obtained naturally just simply by playing throughout the game. There will come a point where you will be given this and this, of course, is for those of you guys that want to fully embrace the ghost playstyle. It reduces enemy detection speed by 40%, reduces the number of kills needed to enter the ghost stance by 2, which is incredibly powerful. And kills have a 30% chance to terrify at nearby enemies, which is incredibly awesome because whenever you kind of get into a fight and then enemies just start running from you, you feel like an absolute badass. Of course, as you expand this, as you upgrade this, you get more elements, you get like a cape. All that kind of stuff like that and uh yeah i just uh i wear this one a lot moving on from there we then have the mongol commander's armor this is another one of the armor sets that not only does not have a second form but also this one cannot be upgraded you get this one quite late in the game when you get to the third portion of the map again there is a mission tied to it so it's pretty difficult to miss but basically in doing this you have to kind of go around clear a few encampments you retrieve the piece of the mongol armor you get it crafted for yourself and if you wear this you get a major increase to health, it reduces all damage by a major amount, and it disguises you while out of combat, massively reducing Mongol detection speed. So if you wanted to walk around their camp, while you can't walk in front of them with it, it does, of course, make it slower for them to detect you. And then lastly, you have the Fundoshi, which basically is your uh, bathrobe. When you go around and you visit every single hot spring, upon completing that, you will then unlock this item. And when wearing this, running and sprinting no longer creates noise. So... Those are all of the fully assembled armor sets. What I'm now going to do is just let you guys watch in the background as I scroll through every single helmet, headband, and mask so you can just see what they look like. There's some incredibly cool items in there. Let me know in the comments down below which ones are your favorites. Enjoy the rest of this video and be sure to keep it locked for plenty more Tsushima content.
Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget, if you haven't already done so, you can join the Arax Gaming Discord. We've got an awesome community over there with so many different channels for you to chat loads of different topics and different games. I'm in there, the team's in there. If you guys want to chat with us, find people to play with, it's just in general a great place to be. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to turn on those notifications so you don't miss any of our future uploads.